Welcome back to Crime After Crime. I'm John Lorden. And I am Daniel Hallen, and this is a special episode. It sure is. It's our second anniversary special and the official start of season three of Crime After Crime. What do you say, Danielle? You up for another year? Absolutely not. I'm out. I'm just kidding. Oh, that's it. I'm just kidding. End of show. See you guys later. (laughs) I'm so dang excited. I still can't figure out how two years have already passed. I know. I know. It's crazy. Um, And it's starting to feel like it's been two years since I've actually seen you in person. I know. I can't stand it. (laughs) I can't stand it. I was so looking forward to seeing you at CrimeCon before they had to cancel it. Yeah. It's taking too long. That road trip's starting to sound real good. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they delayed it. Has it been canceled? Canceled? Have you heard anything? No, just when they canceled the uh, last date that they had. Yeah. 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 I honestly, at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm I'm keeping an eye on what's going on. I kind of keep gauging like with what the theme parks are doing in Orlando and thinking, are they trying to watch that? But I still haven't heard anything official. And I don't know. We're getting close to October, though. So flying by the seat of our pants. Yeah. Living life on the edge. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, we usually do voting results right now. But since this is such a huge announcement, um, we're going to have to wait a bit to see who is the actual winner of season Danielle, that sign isn't nice. She's holding up a sign that says loser. You were holding up a sign basically (laughs) saying the nicer version of me being the loser. (laughs) Well, we're not going to find out until closer to the end of the episode. Who is the winner of season two? But we've got a new topic with two new stories and drum roll, please. Many guest appearances to celebrate the official start of season three. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Last year, we talked about Florida man. This year, we're talking about Florida women. Danielle, don't you think that they could use like a scared straight program specifically in Florida? You mean something that shows what their prisons are like to make people think twice about committing crimes there? Exactly. And guess what? I think I found one. There's a show called Behind Bars, The World's Toughest Prisons. One episode focuses on the Miami-Dade County Jail. You can check it out using today's sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a streaming service founded by filmmakers with a passion for producing and curating the best content out there. History, science, space, nature, and of course, true crime. It's all waiting for you on Magellan TV. And of course, they have amazing shows like Behind Bars. Did you know that the Miami-Dade County Jail actually has a boot camp program, like a military style boot camp? Certain convicts enroll in it for a chance to drastically reduce their sentences, but they have to face drill instructors, harsh physical and emotional demands, and some of the most jacked up haircuts I have ever seen. You really have to check it out. Each episode features a different location. So if you want to run a scared straight marathon at home, check out Behind Bars on Magellan TV. Yeah, definitely. You'll you'll help your kids out. (laughs) Magellan TV works on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, Google Play, iOS. You can watch it on your television, laptop, or mobile device anytime, anywhere. With more than 2,000 documentaries and new content being added weekly, including 4K content at no additional cost, why wouldn't you give Magellan TV a shot? Crime After Crime viewers can try it for free. Visit try.magellantv.com forward slash crime after crime and you'll get a one month free trial. There's nothing to lose. Give Magellan TV a try for free and thank them for supporting Crime After Crime at the same time. Visit try.magellantv.com forward slash crime after crime today. Now, as a quick reminder, Florida has what is known as the Sunshine Laws. According to MyFloridaLegal.com, and that's the websuit for the the websuit, that's the uh, (laughs) website for the Attorney General, uh, the Sunshine Law was enacted in 1967 and can be found in Chapter 286 of the Florida Statutes. These statutes establish, oh, are the police after you, Danielle? Apparently. (laughs) Duck and cover. (laughs) You're not in Florida right now, are you? (laughs) I'm not. Or am I? Surprise. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. We didn't even get to your story yet. Spoiler. Um, These statutes establish a basic right of access to most meetings of boards, commissions, and other governing bodies of state and local government agencies or authorities. Because of this, police reports are extremely easy to acquire. And with that, we get headlines like... 
Florida woman charged with stealing rental car says demons took it. Or Florida woman brings meth into court, tells deputy it's makeup. Or the twerking trifecta, Florida woman arrested after twerking on car. Or Florida woman arrested for twerking in front of school bus full of children. That's that's not nice. Or mm-hmm. Florida woman caught on camera twerking in clothing store while shoplifting. <laughs> That's one way to draw attention to yourself when you don't want to draw attention to yourself. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's footage of that one, Danielle. Uh, I'll You're be sure lying. to run. Yeah, no, no, I'm okay, running it good. right now on the YouTube version. And what's hilarious is it's obvious she knows the security cameras they're watching her, and she's literally shaking it at the security camera. <laughs> Do you think she maybe thought it was a distraction? Maybe, maybe. It does appear that she was working with someone else during this shoplifting scam. And at least in the article I saw, they were using the footage to try to find them. I don't know if they were actually ever caught or not. Oh, my goodness. I sure hope so. Yeah. So they could have had to explain themselves. <laughs> Why Twer- exactly were you twerking? <laughs> yeah, twerking and getting away with it, apparently. Mm-hmm. And that brings us to the first story of the day. Danielle, I am ready and excited. I want to hear your Florida woman's story. Well, you guys buckle in because this might be one of the most Florida things I've ever heard in my life. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. So as a kid, one of my favorite things to do was feed wildlife. We would go to local lakes to feed the ducks until being the extreme rule follower that I am. I read the do not feed the ducks signs and immediately stopped. I can even remember one year on a ski trip, I befriended a three-legged deer. I didn't name her, but her favorite snack was baby carrots. (laughs) And we also all have usually been to zoos where you put about as many quarters as possible and then you get those gross little pellets out and you feed them to the goats. You get the gist. But there's usually a point in time where you realize, I probably shouldn't be feeding wild animals and why. Now, unfortunately, this moment of realization apparently does not happen to too many adults in Florida. Mm -mm. I read article after article. And then, you know, even one of last year's finale stories was a prime example of how the Florida man, you know, we continue to risk our lives to get close to this Florida wildlife. Yep. And I get it. Okay. We all think we're simply feeding an animal. We want to be up close and it's fun, but we don't really realize the disaster that it can actually cause. Or in this case of my story, sometimes people do and they ignore it. The Ibis Golf and Country Club residents in West Palm Beach were victims of exactly this kind of disaster. It was brought to the attention of the media in August of 2019. A young family, the Casamanos, originally lived in New York with two young children. Their dream was to buy a beautiful vacation home in Florida. I'm right there with them. Mm -hmm. They spent a lot of time finding the perfect home and eventually settled a 700,000 home on Wildcat Run in the Ibis Golf and Country Club. The house was perfect. The neighborhood had three beautiful golf courses. Each home felt tucked away. Even the mayor had chosen it as his residence. The home itself had three beautiful bedrooms, perfect for the couple and their two children, a screened area out back with a pool. The lot itself was even rather large at three acres, and it faced directly towards an area known as Grassy Waters Preserve. The neighborhood residents typically loved being near this preserve, gave off the feeling of being in the Everglades. You would see beautiful birds along with other Florida native animals. For the most part, it was amazing. The animals would stay on their side, the humans on the other, and it worked out. The Casamanos, they were ecstatic. For four months, they traveled down to the luxurious home for an escape. The kids played in the pool, relaxed in the sun, but by August, things took a turn that they weren't quite expecting. One by one, vultures made their way to the Casamino's vacation home, making it less than inviting. It started off as only a few, and then the numbers grew, and it got to the point that they couldn't even leave their car out of the garage for any period of time. The vultures chose it as their roosting spot. They would claim the car as their own and peck at it with their incredibly strong beaks, creating dents. It then moved from the car to the screened-in patio, their roof, any chairs outside of the house, the grill out back, and the neighbors seemed to be having the exact same problem. The Casaminos had to pay over $3,000 to repair the areas the birds had destroyed, and it finally got to the point where they started getting alerts to their nest camera while they were up in New York. Wow. Exactly. And one time, there's video of this, John, I really hope you're able to find it and put it on there, but they were alerted through their nest camera and they looked. There were at least 100 vultures <laughs> tearing apart their entire patio. These vultures were in the pool, 
They had ripped out the screens, tore down metal framing, and they left mounds of feces and vomit wherever they went. Oh my goodness. It was a disaster. When the Casaminos checked out the home, they were shocked. They had to repair everything that they had already repaired once before. And to top it off, they said, and I quote, it smelled like a a a a thousand rotting corpses from all of the feces, blood, and vomit left behind by the birds. I was actually going to ask, did they search the house for a body? Like, why are the vultures buzzing that place like that? It's crazy. You're going to find out. Okay. (laughs) The smell was so overwhelming that you couldn't even be outside near the home. The Casaminos realized they couldn't even use their vacation home any longer. They feared for their two-year-old daughter that was small enough that they thought the birds might attack her. Their vacation home in paradise turned into a nightmare, and they quickly realized they were not alone. Their neighbors were infuriated with the problem and had gone to extreme lengths to stop it. People had put up inflatables, like giant inflatables in their yard, hoping to deter the birds. There was music that was played loudly. One neighbor put up fake large owls, you know, kind of like you see to scare away crows and things like that. And all of these things, they were just attacked. The owls within a day were all missing their heads. (laughs) Oh my goodness. You know, I'd never been really scared of vultures before until I heard this entire story. And now... I refused to be anywhere near one. Well, these are Florida vultures too, so. Oh man, so they're like extra crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and there was one neighbor in particular, she was at her wit's end. Cheryl Katz lived down the road and she said that her home had endured much worse than the Cosimanos, which is hard to believe. She said that back on Memorial Day, she had 20 vultures and a worked up aggressive frenzy destroy her pool screen and they fought each other relentlessly in her back patio. She said from inside, she could hear bones snapping, blood was everywhere, and the birds would just repeatedly fly into her windows, either fighting or trying to escape the fight. Wow. And on top of that, Cheryl had leukemia. She was horrified that these birds were going to bring harmful bacteria and illness to her home, so she stopped going outside. And the company that she had hired to take care of her pool, they also refused to come because of the animals. Uh Uh-oh. It was so bad. She felt like her only option was selling her home and moving. And she was quickly told that, guess what? These vultures are a large enough problem that you have to legally disclose them to future buyers. So basically, anyone who came to look at that house would see this problem and run for their lives. Yeah. So Cheryl decided to start investigating the problem herself, and she knew exactly where it likely was starting. Her neighbor, Irma Acosta Aria. Acosta had been living in the neighborhood for years and was well known for being a little too close to the wildlife. She had already been caught in 2016. Buckle in, you ready? Yeah. Wading out into the swamp nearby to feed the alligators raw chicken. (laughs) This woman was willingly just swimming into the swamp. Whoa. With bait. (laughs) With the alligators. (laughs) This then pushed the alligators to be familiar with human contact. So you know how this goes, obviously. This then pushes the alligators closer to the homes. They were terrifying all of the residents. And eventually, wildlife officers had to remove an alligator because of Acosta's feeding habit. And they even were joking around because this alligator was huge. (laughs) Yeah, She had fed it so much extra food. It was just like the fattest, happiest little alligator that there ever was. <laughs> but that's sad too, because, you know, this yeah. thing's being taken from its home and it was just, you know, doing what it's naturally supposed to do, eat. Yeah. So and now she- and, and, and returning it to a natural environment like that after. I mean, how do you? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So Cheryl figured that since Acosta was forced to stop feeding the alligators, that At this point, she more than likely moved on to feeding other animals instead, because the alligator, you guys, was not the only incident. Between 2016 and 2019, Acosta had lured in numerous alligators other than that, large birds, raccoons, and get this, a bobcat. A bobcat (laughs) took over the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And now vultures were being added to the list. And Cheryl wasn't just throwing out speculation here. She had witnessed a lot of these acts for herself. So she would watch Acosta slip out behind her home late at night and disappear for a bit. And then the next day, there would be huge empty bags of dog food in her trash can, despite the fact that Acosta did not have a dog. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cheryl took it upon herself at one point to even start counting how many bags and found that some weeks Acosta would feed these animals up to 120 pounds of dog food. They don't need that. Absolutely not. But guess what else <laughs> they don't need? Beautifully crafted finger sandwiches, John. What? <laughs> there was one instance where Cheryl said that she was driving up her driveway and sitting happy as can be at the top of it was a raccoon using both of its hands to hold and eat a delicious, beautifully crafted finger sandwich. <laughs> but guess what? Didn't stop at just these few finger sandwiches. Acosta was caught taking out numerous trays full of sandwiches, like full on platters, as well as cooked, like beautifully roasted and uncooked whole chickens. And she would just go at night and create her little animal buffet and wow. feed all these animals. Now, Cheryl started to notice after she would catch Acosta in the act, flocks of all kinds of animals would come and eat this buffet. And then they would roam towards the other houses where they would sit with their full bellies and basically harass the residents. So mm-hmm. Cheryl confronted Acosta multiple times to tell her that she was creating a health and safety hazard in the neighborhood. And Acosta would argue, she said, no, the bags of dog food, those were relatives. She denied ever feeding any animals. But at this point, Cheryl, as well as the Casaminos family and dozens of other families, had started to complain to the neighborhood association. The vultures were causing collectively thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in damage. It's a golf and country club. You know, if people's cars are being packed, it's not just, you know, whatever, a little junk car. It's probably... Very, very expensive and very difficult to fix that. Yeah. And some of these vultures were running people from their vacation homes like the Casamanos. And a few people actually moved out entirely. They decided to send Acosta a violation notice. I think they fined her as well and a cease and desist. They also sent Fish and Wildlife to warn her about the danger that she was putting herself and others in. Now, unfortunately, despite what these birds do they are a protected species so mm-hmm. there's really no way of getting rid of them in a way that does not harm them so essentially the only hope they had was that they could convince acosta to stop and this had been going on for years at this point so they weren't sure how it was going to go yeah now fish and wildlife made it very clear to her that these vultures would attack any family pet without hesitation and even small children because out west the same birds eat calves They'll just attack whole calves, big old baby cows. Wow. But Acosta did not seem to feel too threatened by this. So she continued feeding and the property owners association realized their only choice was to sue her for damages. Yeah. She was this time ordered to stop feeding the wildlife legally. But guess what? She was caught continuing again. Mm. The neighbors didn't believe she had stopped because the vulture issue persisted. So fish and wildlife officers worked with the neighborhood and they installed cameras to check sure enough they caught a perfect image of acosta beside a huge alligator feeding it yeah so she was found in contempt of court now while her lawyer argued that the images were too grainy and she was out of town out of town at the time it is very very clear and john there is a picture of this and it almost made me giggle because i was like wow i want to see what this picture is like and i went and looked it up it looks like you had taken a picture on your iphone there's nothing grainy about this she is smiling as big as can be beside like a 15 foot alligator oh my goodness <laughs> i think she has like a roll or like some sort of bread in her hand she's having the time of her life i mean i if, if you want to help animals and be that type of person like you know find the right environment for that find the uh center that's taking care of some of mm-hmm. these animals where you can interact with them in that way i mean there's there's different habitats that you could help and donate to and things like that you don't take them a chicken I, like i keep <laughs> a whole i keep chicken. having a whole chicken yeah and dog food and biscuits and finger sandwiches like it's insane it's like, insane I can't, I can't imagine the amount of money that she has spent so far feeding these animals if she's done it from 2016 to 2019 and the fact that she somehow hasn't been attacked yeah or bit yeah. or hurt at all is mind-boggling to me because if you see the photo which i'm hoping is up for youtube um she's only feet away from this gigantic alligator and she's holding their food yeah. You know, and I'm sure she's tossing it to most of them, but she's not maintaining any sort of distance. She was it's wading into of, the swamp. I mean, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time before there's an accident around that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the, when it comes to her, um, you know, going somewhere 
where she can feed them. And, you know, it is something like that. Her lawyer actually argued saying that she, the whole reason she moved into this neighborhood was because it was beside the reserve. Yeah. So that, in, in her mind, she was, she was moving to this spot because she'd be this close to wildlife and she probably was planning on feeding them the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So in early February, Acosta finally agreed to settle the lawsuit by paying $53,000 by February 14th for all of the attorney fees, costs, and fines that the neighborhood essentially had to pay to get her to stop feeding the wild animals. You know, I can, I can see that. I'm not surprised she shouldn't fight that. She also had to agree that she would entirely stop feeding the animals altogether because there would be larger legal consequences if she didn't. Now, Costa refused to be at the hearing, but she did send her husband and her son, um, and they argued that she had long stopped feeding the animals, and the photos were not of her. It was very interesting to see her attorney and her family kind of just like, like, oh, this isn't her, and then there's just this blatant picture of her (laughs) beside an alligator. Um, But yeah, so from what I know, the animal issue has not persisted. I have not seen much, but honestly, I say give it a few months because she doesn't seem to be scared of wild animals so i don't think she's going to be very scared of the legal system <laughs> yeah no we're gonna we're gonna hear a headline about you know woman that fed animals disappears yeah exactly. I mean, it's, it's got to be just a matter of time and it's just it's not it's not good on so many levels it's not good for the animals mm-hmm. the interaction is terrible because now their natural inhibitions are changing and they're mm-hmm. coming around people and that's where other things are going to happen people are going to be defending themselves and the animals are going to be hurt there's just um, that that's it's weird because you feel like it's coming from a place of her wanting to be kind to the animals or caring about them. And ultimately, the, it, that's not how it works. That's not the way to do that. Well, not at all either. And then it bothers me because she's see she, like she has to know all these animals that are there just destroying her neighbor's property. I mean, yeah. thousands. She's watching people move out. She is hearing that there is a, you know, someone undergoing cancer treatment that could be very, very sick from these birds. And she's just like, eh, well, feeding them finger sandwiches is a bit more important. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy to me. And I do, I understand like that pull to feed animals and, you know, and, you know, take care of them and all of that. But I feel like when there's also a lack of consideration for the human beings surrounding you, there's a Mm -hmm. serious, serious problem there. And I don't understand. I don't understand how she's not seeing that. Yeah. And I'm also kind of curious that there wasn't heavier charges. I mean, yeah, you know, Mm -hmm. $53,000, it's it's a bit of money, but for someone not being able to sell their home because of something someone else's did, like that's, that's a big financial transaction. I think more people probably could have went after her for even more. Oh, absolutely. The Cosmanos, I'm sure they could have done something, you know, they could have had her pay back all they had to spend to fix their pool two times. I mean, and if, if right. you've managed to find the video and put it up, and if you haven't, I suggest everyone go and look it up. You just have to type in Acosta Aria. Um, yeah. The videos of these vultures on these back patios. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't go outside either. These birds do not care. Yeah. They do not care at all. Yeah, oh my goodness. Crazy. But a huge thank you to Herald Tribune and USA Today for the many articles following this absolutely ridiculous, most Florida story I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> do you woman. remember Do you remember the headline? I can't even remember it because I was just so shocked that someone would do that. <laughs> it was just like Florida woman. I think it, I have to look it up now because I need to absolutely know it. There were a handful of okay. them. This one says, chomp, Florida woman, vulture and gator feeder swallows $53,000 fine. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> That's a good one. There were a couple yeah. of other ones, but oh my goodness. It's, yeah. oh, I'm telling you that. Florida. Well. Man. Yeah, and that's a that's a good way to start season three. Um, really, really interesting story, Danielle. Uh, it, do we know anything about was there actual criminal charges or anything outside of the litigation? Um, other than being found in contempt of court, that's I yeah. mean that's pretty much it. She basically just had to pay off being sued, and I do know that they have just threatened you know, there's going to be a lot more issues if she continues doing this because it's basically borderline getting into the endangerment of other human beings. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, a bobcat was roaming the neighborhood looking for her chickens. (laughs) Right, right. Well, interestingly, that's going to tie into one of the stories that we cover on the extras segment at the end of the episode. So stick around for that. But right now, we are going to take a very short break. 
The future of wireless cell phone service is finally here. Stop paying inflated prices and hidden fees on cell phone service, switch to Mint Mobile, and you could be paying just 15 bucks a month. With Mint Mobile, you get great network coverage at literally a fraction of the cost. The activation process is easy, and with just a few minutes of your time, you can save literally hundreds of dollars a year. I've done the tests. Connection strength, sound quality, and even internet speeds were identical to my old service. They also keep their costs down by handling everything online, and then they pass the savings on to you. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text. Don't pay for unlimited data that you're not using. Find the perfect size data plan, choose between three, eight, or 12 gigabytes of 4G LTE data. The average American only uses four to five gigs monthly. You can also bring your old phone number and contacts over to Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash crime after crime. That's mintmobile.com slash crime after crime. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash crime after crime. Start saving right now with Mint Mobile. So Danielle, how do you feed your little animals that you have running all over the place? Well, not by raw chickens, I'll tell you that. But since <laughs> I've found HelloFresh, cooking at home has never been so easy, fun, and delicious. HelloFresh delivers a box right to my door with step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients. Everything that I need to pull together a delicious meal in about 30 minutes. They even have quick recipe options, personally my favorite, that only take 20 minutes. Now, when I cook, we don't have to worry about some bland, overcooked meal. I just follow the steps, use the fresh, high-quality ingredients, and we have a super flavorful meal. Plus, I get some extra brownie points. We had salsa verde enchiladas, and they are amazing. And it was great knowing that they kept my allergies in mind and out of my meals. Are you vegetarian, looking for low-calorie meals, or even kid-friendly meals, Danielle? They've got you covered. HelloFresh makes your life easier. You can change your delivery days, food preferences, and even skip a week if you need to. HelloFresh is also focused on giving back. In 2019, they donated over 2.5 million meals to charity, and this year they're donating even more due to the crisis. HelloFresh also has an amazing offer for our listeners. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash 80CrimeAfterCrime and use code 80CrimeAfterCrime to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. Get contactless delivery right to your doorstep and skip that trip to the grocery store. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash 80CrimeAfterCrime and use code 80 crime after crime for $80 off your first month and free shipping on your first box. Try HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit today. Welcome back and please support these amazing companies that believe in crime after crime. But I'm telling you what, I'm excited to hear your story, John. And I think it's because I've seen so many insane stories. <laughs> looking up these articles that I'm just dying to know which one you chose. <laughs> I'm, di yeah. I'm dying to hear it. <laughs> you know, there's something I noticed though, Danielle, the Florida man stories mm -hmm. had a lot more criminal activity. Oh yeah. Did you notice that too? Like the Florida woman stories, there's some bizarre occurrences and stuff, but in terms of finding crimes, it was a whole different ball game. Well, I feel like with the Florida man crimes, it almost seemed as if it was more like intense. And a yeah. lot of the times, a lot more disturbing, heinous crimes. But for Florida women crimes, it was the most bizarre, like, strange things I've ever heard. Or it was, like, something that was, you know, a little bit more relaxed. You know, just, like, yeah. casual news. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to hit some of those casual ones a little bit later. But in terms of deranged, I think is one of the words <laughs> you oh, <no>. used. <laughs> I've got a story I like to call America's Worst Easter Bunny. Oh, no. And this story is not sponsored by Public Stores, Skittles, Microsoft PowerPoint, or Pepperidge Farm. But they will all be mentioned in this story at some point. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Get ready. Uh, Dictionary.com defines Easter as the most important and oldest festival of the Christian church. Celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's held between March 21st and April 25th on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the northern spring equinox. 
Of course, children have a much different take on Easter. Mm -hmm. To them, it might mean dressing up nice and seeing their families, going to one or several special church functions, uh, receiving chocolate or gifts in a basket, and of course, a giant bunny that likes to leave multicolored eggs around your backyard. Some of those eggs might be actual hard-boiled eggs, while others are plastic. Now, there are a lot of those plastic eggs sold every year. According to the Baltimore Sun, Blyer Industries, who at one time was the only U.S. manufacturer of plastic eggs, made 250 million plastic eggs every single year. That's, that's insane. Yeah, that's basically one for every citizen in mm -hmm. the U.S., um, by the way, those plastic eggs, typically not recyclable. And I, I reuse mine, pro tip. Hey, there you go. Um, yeah, and I found some interesting ways that people were reusing them. Personally, I, I use them for like little screws. If, oh, okay. if I have like computer screws that I want to keep in something, I'll, I'll pop them in one of those. That's brilliant. Or like earrings, maybe? <laughs> oh, is that what you, is no, that what you I do? No, just, you just set me off on a whole other tangent right now. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I could be using so, yeah. this for so much. Yeah, if you have plastic eggs at home, think about how you can reuse them. There are a bunch of fun different ways and things that you can find online for that. Um, but Danielle, I don't know. Have you ever stepped on one barefoot? No, I haven't. This sounds like a nightmare. Is it worse than a Lego? <laughs> yes, it sucks. <laughs> because yeah, a Lego is hard and it has some sharp edges, but these, it, it's like they were engineered to specifically crack into the and sharpest stab shapes. stab you? Yeah, yeah, into these <laughs> wicked sharp shapes. Um, but they do make great uh, little hiding places for candy or small toys or completely inappropriate pictures and possible biological contaminants. Oh, no. <laughs> at least in the mind of one particular Florida woman. April Sestoni was a 43-year-old woman living in Flagler County, which is located on the northeast corner of Florida, right next to the Atlantic Ocean. She worked at a local public supermarket. April is Spanish and Portuguese for April, coincidentally the same month that Easter usually falls in. The word originally comes from the Latin aperire, meaning to open, as in flowers opening in spring or horrified parents opening plastic eggs. Oh, no. <laughs> it's literally like April was, more, was born for this story. You see... April wasn't happy with how she saw the teachings of the Bible being handled by several churches. She claims that she visited 59 different places of worship in an attempt to discuss her feelings with religious leaders, but didn't get the response she was expecting. In her own words, quote, I have attended and I have spoken about all these churches and not even one have replied back to me. They never have time to speak to me about it, she stated. So April had to find another way to get her message out. And like any television station, social media site, or podcaster knows, you got to reach the kids, Danielle. Mm -hmm. You got to reach the kids. You got to reach them, then they spread it like wildfire. That's it. <laughs> On April 5th, the Flagler County Sheriff's Office was getting several strange calls. Citizens were saying a woman was driving around the neighborhood and leaving something in their mailboxes and then leaving the plastic flags in the up position. One pregnant mother named Jessica had this happen to her. When her brother-in-law came inside with an orange plastic egg, they didn't think too much about it. They popped the plastic egg open. They found one pack of Skittles drink mix, a single goldfish cracker, like one. <laughs> this sounds like something my grandmother would do if I'm being really honest so far. <laughs> <laughs> she used to fill mine with pennies. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. Let's see if this continues with your grandmother's <laughs> tradition. A single piece of toilet paper that was folded up into a square, and a few small scrolls covered in writing that appeared to have some religious messages and images. Oh, and images of two men and a woman getting it on. <laughs> no, first of all, my grandmother definitely didn't do that. <laughs> no, are you sure? <laughs> You might want to what ask her. What on earth kind of message is she trying to relay with that? That's the most bizarre, um, just, you know, a single goldfish. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, some porn. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's some photos of these. And I saw one where there was literally a picture of Jesus. And right below that picture. Oh, no. John, you're lying. No. 
we, we had these inappropriate images. Uh, this is a quote from the mother. The last thing I, ex I did expect to see would be pornographic pictures. It was disgusting. Our concern is we have five children under the age of 10 that check the mail. Oh my gosh. Jessica told Oxygen. Uh, of course, the pictures are terrible, but there was also another really important consideration here. This was back in April. And in case you guys forgot, we're still in 2020. I was just about to say. Yeah, we were just getting our heads around the pandemic and you have a stranger giving you a folded up piece of toilet paper and a plastic egg. Some people were worried this might have been an effort to actually spread the virus. Of course, maybe she was commenting on the toilet paper shortage that we were all living through back at that time, too. Or maybe it was something as simple as her packaging for the single goldfish cracker. There's only one. We can't risk that anything happens to it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Or maybe that was her way of proving that it was clean. You know, oh, I grabbed it with the tissue and then I put the whole thing in there. I really I don't know. I wrapped it in toilet paper. I only used it first. <laughs> Yeah, and that's an aspect of this mystery we're just, we're never going to find the answer to. Um, the deputies had a description of the car, a 2004 silver Honda Civic, but they didn't have much to, else to go on. Uh, Sheriff Rick Stolle made a strong statement on Facebook. We are working to identify the offender and put them in the green roof inn. Mm. If anyone else receives something like this or has information on who did this, we ask that you call us immediately. The green roof inn is the sheriff's name for Flagler County Jail, which doesn't only have a green roof, it even has a neon vacancy sign <laughs> at the entrance. <laughs> I swear Florida is just getting more unique by the moment. <laughs> Seriously. I didn't see that vacancy. in the Yeah, I didn't see that in the behind bars special that I watched on Magellan TV. I didn't I didn't see anything about this county jail, but maybe they should work that in there. Not only does it have a vacancy sign at the entrance, it has a list, a sign with a list of accommodations, like group bathrooms and showers. Everything I've been looking for in a prison. Yeah. yeah. And designer jewelry to wear, a.k.a. handcuffs. Oh, my goodness. They're having a good time with their job. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sheriff Rick Stolle having a good time figuring out these signs. Apparently that vacancy sign cost over $800 on its own. Oh he, my goodness. Yeah. He considers the signage a crime prevention technique. So that's his scared straight program. Thankfully, they did get another call about the car days later, seemingly making more deliveries on Hernandez Avenue. They headed right over and caught up to America's worst Easter Bunny. When deputies pulled her over, they noticed a folder on the passenger seat. They asked her if they asked her if they could take a look at it. So she handed it to them. They describe it as full of pornographic materials. When they asked her about it, April said she put messages inside the eggs because she said she wanted to educate people on the need for churches and pastors to give money to less fortunate. Wait a minute. <laughs> See, this is what I was getting at before. I'm like, how did this has to tie in somehow, you know? But like, You don't see it? Nope. Can't say I do. Can't say I do, John. I don't think I ever would have gotten that message from her Easter egg. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I would have either, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but it's to her, apparently it's it it, there's connected. an obvious connection. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the arrest report states, quote, April also made several rants in relation to no one taking care of the elderly and that the church employee's salaries will cover the medical costs. She also told the arresting deputy that she was a church. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm a skyscraper. <laughs> you know what I am? <laughs> what I'm are you? Well, right now I'm hungry. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's about all I have. <laughs> Uh, of course, I'm just kidding. I'm not a skyscraper. Um, oh, good. I was scared for she, a minute. <laughs> yeah. And I know that a church is so much more than a building. So I just oh, want to be clear about that, too. Uh, she was actually saying that she had a business license to be a church, which I didn't actually see any proof of, but that's what she told them. Uh, I don't know what she her church was named, but I'll let you your minds run free with that one. Maybe uh, the Church of the Plastic Egg. Oh, no. Um, quote... <laughs> We got a quote here from Sheriff Rick Stolle. She certainly has a bizarre, almost zealous opinion of churches and what they should believe in and how they should teach the teachings of the Bible. 
when they inquired about how many people she may have been, quote, educating, mm. she said she distributed more than 400 within the past few days. Oh, no. Oh, that's a nightmare. 400 little plastic eggs with little dirty pictures in them. She also admitted to making the tiny dirty flyers on her computer using Microsoft PowerPoint. Oh, no. That's how they tie in. Yep. Uh, <laughs> apparently, she had been making a habit of delivering the eggs on her way home from work at Publix. The only problem is that this is going on when Florida was in full lockdown. Uh -uh. So she's also violating the statewide stay at home orders. They asked if she intended to harm anyone if her demands were not met. And she said she didn't. As she was being arrested, she insisted she was not a religious fanatic. Well, you know. I am a church, though. <laughs> not a religious fanatic. I'm just a church. I'm just a church. Uh, our team did a great job in tracking this deranged offender down and taking her into custody, said Sheriff Rick Stolle in a press release. Thankfully, she did not appear to be sick with COVID-19 symptoms. Could you imagine um, if she had? Oh, boy. This, this, oh, my goodness. Yeah, this could have been terrible. I mean, it's already terrible. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it could have been so much worse. She was charged with 11 counts of distributing obscene material and booked into the Sheriff Perry Hall inmate detention facility. I guess she didn't get to go to the Green Roof Inn after all. Oh, dang. Uh, she was being held on a $7,000 bond. She had previously been arrested for driving with a suspended license uh, and failure to appear for a traffic summons. I think she also got another charge for driving with a suspended license this time as well. Her driver's license was apparently suspended for her failing to pay her child support, according to the arrest report. Um, kind of strange. She's buying all these materials to put these eggs together to deliver to random mailboxes. But for some reason, we're skipping on the child support. I feel like everything is not connecting here. Like yeah. not, not a single thing is really circling back around. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a very strong connection we're going to touch on at the end that I'm, I'm surprised I actually bumped into. Uh, on violating the stay at home order charge, April might have had a chance to fight that one if she did this in the states of Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or Montana, because their governors wrote directives this year that the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy were deemed essential services. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious. I did not know that was a thing. It was. It was. And not only did they do it, it was also declared by the Prime Minister of New Zealand and the premiers of several provinces in Canada. So it was kind of... Uh, it almost was like a viral media thing that happened where I think it was the prime minister of New Zealand that did it first. And then other people started catching on and like this governor did it in this state. And then this mayor did it over here. So, but could you imagine if they were like, well, we technically can't charge her because we did legally I state. I know. <laughs> you can't and deliver I, Easter eggs. <laughs> right. Right. I even looked into the detail of some of these uh, declarations that, yeah. that were made and Honestly, they were very clear about it being magical creatures. So I don't okay. know if, if she would have been able to defend herself that well with it. It kind of depends on how it was written for that particular well, area. she is a church, so. Yeah, that's true. I think she can do anything she wants. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Sheriff Stolle described April as a sick and deranged religious zealot. And he also states, quote, this again proves that see something, say something works. Mm hmm. hmm. See something, say something. Maybe that should be the name of the church mm. that she starts. Mm -hmm. See something? Uh, I know there are so many parts of this story that seem extremely unbelievable, but I also hit one more fact that honestly no one else seemed to pick up on in any of the articles that I saw on this. And it was a fact I found in the actual police report about her. And that fact is her birthday is April 10th, 1977. And with a quick little Google search, I verified that was Easter Sunday that year. You know how like you're like everyone has their own destiny. We're all here for a reason. Exactly. Exactly. This was, <laughs> right this from the was start. Her plan. <laughs> yep. Yep. I wonder if she had like a little um, birthmark on her somewhere that looked like a 2020. You know. Oh my <laughs> like gosh. Just your this destiny. Is the year I've been waiting for. <laughs> yeah, your destiny will be fulfilled in 2020. <laughs> 
And that's how we got the headline, Florida woman put 400 Easter eggs filled with porn in mailboxes. Thank you, Oxygen, Palm Coast Observer, Vice, MyNews13, CNN, Canoe.com, Fox 10 Phoenix, and the Flagler County Sheriff's Office for information contributing to today's story. All I can think about, I wish we could have caught the reactions of everyone that opened up these eggs. Yes, yes. Uh, That could almost be like a YouTube channel. (laughs) Absolutely. I like the yeah. unboxing, but your like pornographic Easter eggs that you un like you didn't want in your mailbox, but you know, here we are. Well, and I I would imagine, yeah, as you're opening it, you have this sense of confusion. Um no, first look of a all goldfish. Well, the first thing I'm shocked by is Skittles makes a candy mix drink. Yeah, when you said that I wasn't sure about that either. And I need to make sure that my kids don't hear about that. I looked it up. <laughs> It's real. It's like, I don't know if you remember, um, there was these drinks that they used to push in the 80s that were like uh, some type of like diet drink or something, but you would get a bottle of water, uh, Crystal Light. Yeah, it's like Crystal Light. Mm -hmm. Light. Yeah. And you tear off the top and then you pour it in the bottle of water and shake it up. Mm -hmm. That's what they've done with Skittles. Basically, (laughs) you get a Skittles pack that is all just powder and you pour it into a bottle of water and you shake it up. It sounds delicious. It sounds it like it might make a good drink mixer. Oh, that's Just a good point. Just throwing that out there for those of you. <laughs> oh, you could put that in like jello shots. Yeah. <laughs> Just come up with all so, these great ideas. Let's start delivering them. <laughs> I'm going to be the new headline, Florida. Delivering yeah, but, Skittles jello shots on people's mailboxes. <laughs> I remember one from last year or something about jello shots. <gasps> um, but yeah, think of all the emotions you're going through. You open this Easter egg. You, you learn that Skittles has a drink mix, first of all. Then you see one tiny goldfish cracker. (laughs) Then you find a wadded up piece of toilet paper. And then you find these awesome pictures. Danielle, to me, that sounds like a survival kit. Mm -hmm. Like if if I was going to a deserted island and I could only pack. Yeah, if I could only pack one plastic (laughs) egg. (laughs) You can't forget all the good things in life. (laughs) That's right. A little snack, a little drink. A little entertainment, a little square of toilet paper. I'm going to be living, You're living set. life. You're set. As, a, as a matter of fact, Danielle, I'm curious uh, if you were going to a deserted island and you could only bring a, what you could fit into a plastic egg, <laughs> what would it be? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. That stresses me out. Um, <laughs> definitely. The whole goldfish thing sounds like a really great idea. Just one. Yeah. I mean, I probably would put more than one because I really like goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or you could put a whole bunch of gummy bears in that. Oh, gummy bears is good. You can kind of squeeze them in, so you might yeah. be able to fit some more in. But I don't um, think I could fit anything. Like, there's nothing else that I could fit into that. Like, not well, a single thing. Maybe I've like, had a little more time to think about it than than you have. Okay. What about se- what about seeds? Oh, that's brilliant! How did I not mm. think about that? I'm about to start my fall harvest. There That'd be you great. go. You could fit so many seeds in that. Yeah, yeah. I might even give up the uh, dirty pictures to get some extra seeds in there. <laughs> you make sacrifices, John. You make sacrifices. <laughs> oh, that's a brilliant learned, idea, though. Yeah, I learned so much researching this story. Uh, I also learned that it used to take 27 hours to create one Peeps marshmallow back in 1953. And now it takes only six minutes. That's insane. I've learned that 88% of people eat the ears of the chocolate bunny first absolutely compared to five percent which i'm surprised it's even this much that start with the tail who would do that i don't know call what, who's the, calling the cops <laughs> yeah who's the the bunny butt munchers out there <laughs> um and 16 billion jelly beans are made for each easter i love some jelly beans those are like my weakness i will only eat them around easter because if i don't stop eating them around easter i mm, we'd have a huge problem that to me is like you know how they say like potato chips you can't just eat one i am like jelly beans i'll shovel those in by the handful they're so good i love them they're delicious they're also good in popcorn the little mini ones oh man Mm -hmm. yeah the jelly belly popcorn Mm -hmm. yeah yeah those are a weakness for me i had to actually stay away from those because i'll i'll eat a whole pack Mm -hmm. um yeah. I also figured out after hearing today's stories, I, I think I finally realized why CrimeCon was going to be in, in Florida this year. 
We have to do it. It's important. <laughs> we're going to draw everyone in. People are going to be so fascinated. Yeah, we got to bring like, everyone there. I get down with this lifestyle. <laughs> oh, goodness. So that's my story. What would you think, Danielle? I loved it. That was great. That's See, but I'm just like still not over the fact that I don't understand how, like, what message she thought she was going to portray. To me, that's just like an act of anger. Like, she's just yeah. so mad. She's like, yeah, well, if no one's going to listen to me, I'm going to do this. Take yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it does seem almost like a passive aggressive response to trying to get back to those organizations that she was trying to reach out to that wouldn't talk to her. Well, then I'll get to your children and you'll hear about me through this. Well, I guess so. But it's just like terrible because she just picked a whole bunch of randos to do this to. Yeah, I also I wish that there was a really I saw some decent pictures, but nothing that was very clear about what was written on those scrolls. And there was a lot like it was super, super tiny writing. So I have no idea if I mean, I don't know, maybe there was write them all. No, no, she did them in PowerPoint and then printed them out and uh, folded them up. And I think some eggs would have more than one. I think there was two that that popped up in some, but so maybe that was like the message that kind of connected it all, but it, that kind of got blown to the side, you know, with maybe. Yeah. Pornographic photos. <laughs> People are like, yeah, Whoa, how do you wait pay- a minute. Exactly. How do you pay attention to anything else mm-hmm. when, you know, it, it's just the thought of something that is seen as a child's object showing up in your mailbox and then containing a photo like that is yeah. Very bizarre. Mm. Well, we have waited a year for this moment we have been working going back and forth Mm -hmm. telling story after story battling we we have the (laughs) we have the season of revenge enacted did it come to fruition we're about to find out with voting results with danielle for the last episode worst dates ever which again i say this every time but i'm telling you that is one of my favorite episodes we brought the craziest stories and i loved it yeah, we did. But we put it in your hands. That was the last one. We were kind of yep. going crazy those last few episodes. It was like having to catch up, all this. So let's find out. Twitter with 63% of the votes. Danielle. <laughs> yeah, with the music. I like it. And then 37% of the votes went to John. With the website poll, 61% went to me and 39% to John. That means the season two winner is Danielle. Congratulations, oh Danielle. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. I seriously don't know how I pulled that one off. You were you destroying me for the longest time. You know what it was like? It was like watching a race where someone is doing really good and Mm -hmm. strong and then someone that looks like they're kind of trailing behind Mm -hmm. all of a sudden in the last leg they turn it on and they just whip them maybe because maybe i was just cruising and then i was like oh wait a minute (laughs) it it did seriously your last two stories made all the difference in the world and you know i think the one right before this i think you had the the largest win percentage that we might have had so far um so yeah i am more than happy to concede uh congratulations danielle Thank it's you. it's always a fun <laughs> challenge you dodged the season of revenge but i did maybe it was just the fact that you kept bringing up the season of revenge the last few episodes because we were getting maybe. close to the end and i think my brain subconsciously panicked <laughs> yeah it's it's a real bummer for the audience though because i was going to send everyone 100 bucks if i won this year but you uh. totally just bribed this <laughs> Maybe I should have told him that before the actual Maybe. vote, huh? That might have been good. Oh my goodness <laughs> gracious. That's crazy though. And but you know, I hate winning though at the same time because I wanted you to win so bad because I was going to send you the coolest hat ever oh. if you want. I'll still send it to you. And I'm not going to give oh. away what it was because it was fantastic. <laughs> well, yeah, don't give it away. And let's see. Maybe maybe it'll a, a good time will come up or maybe uh, maybe I'll win season three. But I don't know. You're 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 up by two at this point and I've got work to do for season three. Um, then I can send you a hat that says winner of season three season of revenge round two (laughs) (laughs) that's a little wordy daniel you might want to work on the branding with that but i think it's great it fits perfect (laughs) um well as always uh i wanted to do something special because you won and you earned it um I spoke to Danielle before, and uh, 
we decided that she probably didn't need another trophy because I don't want her stacking up a bunch of trophies on the on the shelf behind her. Um, but I wanted to use the funds that we would use for the trophy to do something else. So I tried to get a cameo for you, but it didn't come through. Oh, and I've, no. <laughs> yeah, I've never had that happen before. Like, it, you know, yeah. it, you make the submission and then it tells you how many days until they're supposed to respond and they didn't respond. And it just said, you know, your, your thing's canceled. An hour after I got the email about it mm-hmm. being canceled, I actually got a response from the person I was reaching out oh, to. My gosh. So um, it's interesting because they're not real happy with how the video came out and they really don't want us to share it. So we're not going to run it on the show, but we're, I'm going to play it for you now. And then you can explain, (laughs) you can explain to the audience what it is. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't even think my mouth is going to (laughs) move. All right, Danielle. So they don't know what has just happened. (gasps) Uh, What did you see? Is that crazy? Who is it? Draco. <laughs> Draco. Draco. Malfoy. Malfoy. You are lying. Nope. That was Tom Felton. Congratulating you. I'm not a you. cry. I'm the biggest freaking fangirl in the entire world. He said my name and it's hilarious. He was, he kept saying Daniel and then he's like, no, it's Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's insane. I'm literally, yeah. my whole body feels like there's electricity running through it. I'm the biggest Harry Potter fan in the entire world. <laughs> I'm going to cry for at least like four hours after this. <laughs> yeah. So what happens is because it didn't come in in the right time frame, Cameo yeah. sends a thing and they're like, hey, you know, Tom oh, sent you something, um, but we're not going to charge you for this. This this is on us. So uh, because I could tell he wasn't happy with the sound quality, yeah. that's why um, we want to, you know, respect his wishes to not actually publicize it. But he did want to send the message and essentially he did it for free. So he's he's kind oh of a... Oh my gosh. What he a looks, nice guy for doing that. He looks... Oh man, he looks so different. At first I didn't even recognize him. But then the second you hear his voice, you're like, oh... Because I kept saying, I'm like, I swear... I'm like, that looks like while we're waiting for it to play. I was like, that looks a lot like Draco Malfoy. <laughs> yeah, except he's wearing little Harry Potter glasses. I know, he's got and he, little had round... a, he had a hat on, so it was so hard to recognize him too. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm still shaking. Yeah, I don't know if you could also hear. I'll send you a different version okay. um, so that you can <laughs> play it for your friends. But uh, he also called me a, I think it was a filthy mud blood. Of Is course. that a good thing? Is that a good thing? Mm, no. <laughs> No, nope, that's not a good thing at all. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, I'm so upset that the quality was bad. We're not going to put it in there because I know so many of my followers are also such huge Harry Potter fans. I'm always, I'm literally constantly asked what house I'm in. And yeah. he's in my house. He's a fellow Slytherin. Oh, I'm freaking out. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if I asked you that on uh, a regular episode yeah. or on the Patreon I think episode. It was but a I Patreon rem- special. Yeah, I do remember you saying that you were a Slytherin. So when I saw that he was available, I was like, well, we got to go. Oh, my gosh, that's insane. (laughs) I even like I'm about to start bawling again. I wish you even knew like how much that meant to me. I'm about to start like hysterically crying. (laughs) Yeah. That's like my whole childhood. Yeah, I did send him a big thank you. You're the best, John, in the entire world. Forget a trophy. That was the best thing ever. (laughs) Oh, Oh, she's tearing up, too. I am. Harry Potter's... Hello, I've got... Is it this arm? No, it's this arm. Harry Potter tattoo... Oh, wait, no. It was no, this arm. No, it's the other one. I've got a Harry Potter <laughs> tattoo there, a Harry Potter tattoo yeah. here, and I almost named my bearded dragon Draco, but then everyone does that, so I didn't do it. Yeah. I also thought it was just really cool of him to to kick it in after the fact like that and essentially to, you know, to do it for free just because he heard you were a Slytherin and he... <sighs> Wanted to make sure that he gave you a, a high five for you that. Support so. your fellow Slytherins. We're looked at so badly, but you know what? We're really great people. <laughs> <laughs> and he's proving that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, on top of the celebrity congratulating you, <clears throat> we've also reached out to several of our friends in the true crime community, and they are bringing their Florida woman stories. And I just wanted to point out that um, this is such a good example of why you need to listen to more than one true crime personality, even if they're covering mm-hmm. the same stories, because we all have different ways of presenting them. We all have different things that we focus on. And here we're going to hear several different stories told in very 
different ways. So let's start with the first one, which is Tim and Lance from Crawl Space. John Lorden and Danielle Hallen of Crime After Crime. Happy Podversary. What is going on? You've made it all the way to the summer of 2020. Congratulations. I can't believe that you guys are going another year. I'm just kidding. I can totally believe that you guys are going another year. What a great show. Happy birthday. And we're so thrilled to be a part of your uh, birthday celebration. And we wanted to bring you a couple of Florida woman stories, some of our favorites, just to wish you guys a happy birthday. And the one I found, Lance, is was was from November 29, 2019, and it was about a Florida woman whose Thanksgiving dinner, a family Thanksgiving dinner, was interrupted by a nine-foot alligator. And uh, w- when the alligator began knocking on the door, banging on the front door even, hissing and swinging his tail around, and they looked through the window, and sure enough, it's a gigantic alligator, and uh, it was just smacking the door. It wanted turkey, Lance. It wanted turkey. You can't really keep an alligator down, especially on Thanksgiving, especially in Florida. You know, they want that turkey. They know where it is and they're going to come and get it. So that is uh, one reason why I do not celebrate Thanksgiving in Florida. And also there's a reason why I do not want to celebrate Christmas in Florida. And that's because some Floridian women want to beat up people with artificial Christmas trees out of Clearwater, Florida on December 10th. A Floridian woman was upset about a TV being too loud, and she attacked a man with the artificial tree, according to Clearwater Police Department. She was trying to get to sleep around 6.50 a.m., and the person who she lives with had the TV on too loud. So the reasonable solution to that was to have an argument that turned physical and take apart the artificial Christmas tree and beat up the man with it. She was arrested on domestic battery charges, and the man suffered scratches all over his face, his neck, and his stomach. So uh, holiday time in Florida does not seem to be a very safe time. (laughs) But the holiday time, as in the happy birthday, the birthday time of year for John and Danielle's crime after crime, is always welcome, and congrats on making it another year from Tim and Lance at Crawl Space and Crawl Space Media. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You two are great. Wasn't that nice? That was great. I absolutely loved that. And I think it's hilarious that that alligator was trying to get the turkey because, you know, maybe it was having a little craving because of a raw chicken from someone I know. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Yeah, I was wondering, is that related <laughs> to that story? I also like that it kind of flows in with the holiday oh, aspect yeah. of my story as, as well. Mm-hmm. That's um, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've also got some new friends to the channel. Now, of course, you guys heard Tim on last uh, year's anniversary special. Mm-hmm. We're so thankful that Lance was able to join him this time. But uh, some new friends that we have from a show called L.A. Not So Confidential are here to share their story. Hi, guys. It's Dr. Scott. And Dr. Shiloh from the L.A. Not So Confidential podcast. We want to wish Crime After Crime a very happy YouTube anniversary in this dumpster fire of a year, 2020. And our gift to you today is this lovely Florida woman story. L.A. Not So Confidential's most downloaded episode is about killer nurses. So, of course, we had to choose the story of Bobby Sue Dudley Terrell, an angel of death out of St. Petersburg, Florida in 1984. She worked as a night nurse at a convalescent home. And within the first month that she worked there, 12 patients died. She had been previously diagnosed with schizophrenia, had given her own son her psychotropic medication, and spent a year in a mental health facility. After the patient deaths at the nursing home, the police were called. When they got there, they found Bobby Sue with a really significant stab wound to the stomach, claiming that an intruder had stabbed her. A psyche valve was ordered, and she was again diagnosed with schizophrenia and Munchausen syndrome. And in 1985, her license was finally revoked. She was charged, and she was sentenced to 95 years in prison and died there in 2007. A wild killer nurse, and of course, she is a Florida woman. Happy Happy anniversary. anniversary. Wow. L- LA not so confidential bringing on like a whole little mini episode there and it's such a good example of why you really need to check them out these are experts yeah. in their field uh, the stuff that they're talking about they really know about in depth uh, and they've got a great style I like how they broke up the story there too that was cool oh my gosh I know I love that and that sounds so much like so many different why are there so many nurses that are like this I, I, need, I, that, I need that question answered 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh, we might have to do a nurse's episode. Have we done? We've done the criminal doctors. Yeah, that's and that's a good point. I don't know. And it also seems to be on the East Coast, so I'm getting a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, we also have a friend of ours, one half of Generation Y, Justin, that sent in a message. This is Justin from the Generation Y podcast. One of my favorite Florida woman stories, the crime is nothing major. It's a 55-year-old woman who keeps a 125-pound gator named Rambo as a pet. She dresses him up, he sleeps in her bed, she kisses him on the mouth, and he eats at the dinner table with her. Of course, this goes against Florida ordinances, and they want her to set him free, because you are not allowed to have an alligator as a pet. Although she says that he is too domesticated to survive on his own in the wild. It's a love story gone wrong where an overstepping government is trying to separate a Florida woman from her child. Poor Rambo. I know. I'm telling you, she must be related to Acosta. Or either that or now Acosta's going to bring, just totally bring one into her home. She'll be like, forget it. I'm not doing this outside anymore. People keep catching me. Yeah. I heard the story about Rambo. He can eat at my table. Exactly. How on earth? That scares me. Ooh. Yeah, is this a new trend that we're seeing yeah. out there with people um, adopting alligators? Um, we now have, <laughs> I swear this is almost like a mini movie, and if you have a chance to watch this on YouTube, you really need to. Uh, our good friend John Crimes sent this in. Oh, I can't wait. JD, what case are we doing today, sir? No case, I'm doing something fun for my friends, John and Danielle. Lorden and Holland? Oh, Master, I've always wanted to work for... With. You mean you've always wanted to work with them, as in you help me and not leave me for them, correct? It would just be an honor to work with two minds of a much superior intellect than my present company. Well, barring I don't reprogram you, could you look up Florida Woman February 20th? Sure, Master. It says a Florida woman was accused of zipping her boyfriend in a suitcase for hours until he died. While I do not condone that happening to humans, I do wonder, is that something that's possible to do with a true crime or virtual assistant at times? Nonetheless, I'd like to take this time to wish my dear friends, John Lorden and Daniel Holland, another great anniversary on your podcast. You guys do amazing work and many, many more amazing years to come. Oh, and if you should need any help on any future cases, JD Disconnect. I'm so sorry, Master. <laughs> he blows everything out of the water always. I live for it. Oh my yeah. gosh, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just going to put the word out right now. Hey, uh, JD, I've got a lot of extra hard drive space over here. Yep, you're trying to come edit some videos for me. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could use some help. Uh, thank you so much, John Crimes. Really enjoyed that. And that's actually a little bit of a sneak preview. He's going to start using that character, the AI assistant, mm -hmm. uh, in some of his other stuff. So uh, that might be the first time you're hearing him, but I'm pretty sure not the last time you're going to hear from JD. Oh, I can't wait. He always yeah. does the most amazing things. I know it. I'm I'm almost waiting for the right project to awesome. kind of mm -hmm. yeah to kind of collaborate with him on because he's got such a great cinematic view um, and I really think that there's certain cases that benefit from that and yeah I think the time for that is going to come at some point really soon. We've got one more story to play from a very good friend of ours and fill in host whenever mm -hmm. we need it, uh, Stephanie Harlow. Hello, everybody. I'm true crime YouTuber Stephanie Harlow, and I am talking to you in the middle of the day in my pajamas, but I would like to take a moment to wish Crime After Crime a happy anniversary. And to mark the occasion, I want to tell you about my favorite Florida woman headline, which was a woman in Florida who called the police because her refrigerator broke and she wanted to see if they could do anything about it. And they actually did. They brought her a new one. So a little bit of positivity and hope in a crazy and tumultuous time. Happy... <laughs> 
happy anniversary crime after crime i love you guys and i'll see you all soon bye thank you so much stephanie oh and i loved that headline too because she did wasn't that nice yeah i remember reading the article about it and you know she was like this is an emergency for me my food's gonna go bad and i don't know if i'll be able to get more and so they brought her you know they helped her and i feel like you don't see stuff like that too often yeah definitely as a matter of fact um that's one of the things i think during the florida man episode i never saw any headlines that were even close to anything nice i don't i don't think i ever saw one yeah but for florida women it was pretty different uh we also found one that was florida woman finds missing dog after six years which was a really touching story that really was i and i remember i read that as well and she oh my gosh she was like i had no idea i was walking by a new dog and they called me (laughs) i think that's crazy (laughs) and then a florida woman takes job at nursing home to see her husband she actually took a job as a dishwasher so that she'd be able to still see him which I would have done the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really touching. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, the most touching one for me is the Florida woman that drops pants, licks man, dances naked in Waffle House parking lot. There's just <laughs> so many kind and caring Florida women out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's actually one of the first headlines that I think I stumbled upon. Oh, my goodness. But <laughs> you guys, here we go. We're ramping things back up again, heading yep. into season three. So you guys, here we go. Who's going to win the first episode? You get to the vote. Who had the best Florida woman story? It is all in your hands. Season of Revenge, round two. I want John to destroy me this year. I do. I gen- <laughs> No, I genuinely do. I do. Well, that's so kind. Thank you. I'm ready to send you uh, your lengthy, very wordy hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I'm, I'm going to run out of tricks to pull for you. I mean, last year it, we had uh, a, a man from a story that you covered, and then we had uh, DB Tuber. That was great. Uh, and then we had Chris Hansen, and I just I couldn't find any true crime people, so I had to go with Big Celeb. Like, how do you? How do I top Draco? I, I can't you... win three years in a row, folks. You're gonna you're gonna break me. I will say though, I'm pretty. I mean, lose. I'm... I can't lose three years. See, I'm still saying I'm the winner. Where's my sign? <laughs> I'm telling you, though, but you could just get Tom Felton back and I'd probably still cry again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my Uh, goodness. You can vote at the Twitter account at Crime After Pod for seven days after the episode drops, or you guys can head over to www.crimeaftercrimepodcast.com and you can vote there. We do have a link in the description box below. You can still click the I up in the top right hand corner of this video, like you used to be able to, and it will just instead send you to the website. While you're there, you can also find all the links you'll ever need, including where to find more content by Danielle and myself. Uh, speaking of which, new podcast coming from John Lorden called Ser- Seriously Mysterious. <gasps> mm. I'm here for this. I didn't yeah. know about this. I am just being shocked today. This is a great day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Little teaser. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, at crimeaftercrimepodcast.com you can also suggest show topics join our patreon shop our teespring store you can even get your own mug from there where you can be a winner every single month also yeah, like danielle is <laughs> i have my mug up right here crime after crime mug. <laughs> it's filled with john's tears i'm just kidding <laughs> it is oh we also really want to thank our patrons you guys are absolutely amazing and you kept us running the entire first season plus patrons get a bonus patreon special segment monthly it's a lot of fun and you get a personal shout out in an upcoming patreon special that's right so we are going to be back next month with a topic we were actually planning for season two and we had to shift it's coming back it is felony foodsters, mm-hmm. crimes related to food in some way. Really curious to see what you're able to find on that one, Danielle. Oh, I'll probably have a heart attack and then I'll be way too relaxed from winning the season. So <laughs> I'm going to have to get, kick myself in the butt a little bit to find something great. <laughs> I'm going to have to take every extra step I can and try to get ahead. So let's say use that to your advantage. This <laughs> whole entire beautiful episode of Crime After Crime is produced and hosted by Danielle Hallen and John Lorden. And if you enjoyed this show, please rate or review us on whatever platform you found us on. And the best way you can help others find us is to tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone that you love Crime After Crime, particularly our amazing anniversary specials. And we will (laughs) see you guys next time. Bye-bye.